This week, we'll try to get to the core of one of our viewers' most burning questions, and that is, how long will the repair work on the orbital launch mount take? We'll talk about what's been done so far, what's coming up, and whether or not we think Elon's estimate is correct. We'll also talk about Booster 10's uncertain fate, a mysterious new tank that arrived, and preparations for Ship 25's upcoming static fire testing, plus more. What's up, Star Nerds? I'm Jack Byer, and this is this week's Starbase Update. Let's get right into it. They say every beginning has an end, but hopefully the beginning of this video is not the end of Booster 10, which got moved from the Mega Bay over to the Rocket Garden this week. Instead, we're hoping this move is merely to store Booster 10 while SpaceX prepares the Massey's cryogenic test site to be ready for booster cryogenic testing. Hopefully we'll see this new booster heading to Massey's for testing sooner rather than later. With Booster 9 and Ship 25 confirmed as being the next vehicles for flight, it's not hard to assume Booster 10 might be the booster for the third flight. But, of course, like everything SpaceX related, one shouldn't assume things right away, so we'll just have to keep a close eye and see what happens. That said, my bet, at least as of right now, is that Booster 10 is going to fly. It's perfectly safe, it's not going to be scrapped. SpaceX probably just needed to free up some space in the Mega Bay. Next up, this week we saw the LR-11000 crane that SpaceX will use to construct the next Mega Bay raise its boom at the production site. This is the same crane that had been at Roberts Road in Florida and that we had seen on many of our flyovers at Kennedy Space Center. You probably remember it if you've watched any of them. Along with the new crane being erected at the location of the new Mega Bay, we saw the movement of the prefabricated Mega Bay sections that were built at the propellant production site over to where they will be installed. Certainly SpaceX is wasting no time putting these together and we should see the new Mega Bay rise quickly out of the ground in the next few weeks and months. Right next to the new Mega Bay, we can see a cleared area that has been flattened and prepared for easy access. Maybe this location will be for a new parking lot? Maybe it'll be an extension of the Rocket Garden. Either way, more space should be helpful for SpaceX one way or another. This week, we also saw the arrival of a new turntable. No, not that kind of turntable. This is the piece of equipment used to rotate Starship and booster barrels and vehicles as they are welded with robotic welders. If you want to know more about what parts get welded to what other parts and how all of this is done, we made a couple of videos about precisely that. How to build a Starship and how to build a Super Heavy. They are super great summaries of the whole complicated process of building a Starship or booster all the way from a coil of steel to a completed vehicle. So definitely consider watching those. Links in the description. It's interesting to see this new turntable delivered as it means space SpaceX will have yet another place to weld ships and boosters together. If you thought the current production cadence was crazy, well buckle up, because there's a lot more coming. Next up, part of upgrading production at Starbase means upgrading the machine that builds the machine. We've seen in the past few weeks and months how SpaceX is preparing to build an extension for the Star Factory building. Ideally, this building should eventually replace all the tents at the production site. but. SpaceX can't remove the tents without having another location where they can do all the work that's already done inside them. So Starbase is getting a bit of a facelift, with some of the older buildings, like the ground fabrication building, going away to make room for this new extension. Another building that we had to bid goodbye to this week at the production site was the good old windbreak. Built in the Starhopper and Mark I era to protect welders from getting their welds ruined by the wind, it was functionally outdated basically as soon as it was built and thus SpaceX moved on and built the mid-bay and high-bay. In the last couple of years, it's served mostly to do work on nose cones and their payload bay sections. Now that it's gone, its space will be used to make way for the new Star Factory expansion to crank out more barrel sections and more nose cones. Starbase isn't the only place where the old is being cleared out to make way for the new. We're also doing that in our merch store. You might notice that today's video does not have a sponsor, and that's because the sponsor is you. You can contribute to everything we do here at NSF by purchasing some cool metal prints on our store. We now have the Last Chance collection with prints that will be removed on June 11th, so by the end of this week, to make way for new cool prints in the near future. As a reminder, these photos are printed directly on metal, and they look great, and you don't need a frame. They come with everything you need to hang them, so they just go right on your wall, looking great. Also, the photographers get some of the revenue from these metal print sales, so it's another great way for you to not just support NSF in general, but also folks like Nick, Pauline, Max, or yours truly. Head over to shop.nasaspaceflight.com to find the new collection or grab another piece of merch you like. Link is in the description. Things like the merch store and the membership program are absolutely key to helping us continue to do what we do and helping us continue to improve doing what we do. So thank you so much for even considering buying some merch from the merch store. All right. 
back to the update. Over at the launch site, we saw a lot more progress on the orbital launch mount repair work this week. This included the dismantling of the crane that had been used to lift and lower down the long rebar cages we saw used for the foundations that will be needed for the new water-cooled steel plates. As we've discussed previously, in order to prepare the ground for these water-cooled steel plates, SpaceX needed to build a fitting foundation for them. To this end, teams have been putting down sheet piles all around the ground underneath the orbital launch mount. These sheet piles provide a solid wall. This prevents the surrounding area from caving in as the operation is carried out, giving the ground the strength and support needed. These sheet piles provide a solid wall for teams to excavate and lay down rebar where the future water pipes will go in. In fact, we're already seeing excavation taking place, so hopefully these water pipes are installed here sooner rather than later. There's still a lot of work yet to be done, but it appears we're somewhere around halfway through. Elon said just last week that these upgrades should be complete in about a month, and it seems that SpaceX might be on the right track here, but what do you think? Will we see Booster 9 head out to the launch site in a month to start its static fire test campaign? I think it all being done in a month is plausible, but knowing how things go with SpaceX, I'm gonna guess more like two months. So, and again, this is a complete guess. I'm thinking we see a static fire test of a booster on the orbital launch mount, probably booster nine, in August. Progress is also being made near the water deluge tanks with rebar being laid down for what is likely to be the foundation for yet another tank. We're not sure if this is for another water tank, more stacks of little pressurized tanks, something else, or what but we do know that there's going to be a new tank in town really soon. And that's precisely because, well, a new tank was delivered to the port of Brownsville, and it very much seems destined for Starship. You can see here the ship with a new tank going through the Brownsville channel to dock at the port. Next up, with a new tank having arrived, old tanks are getting, um, I guess you could call it repaired? What they're doing is literally pulling out the dents on the damaged tanks with a few chains and a crane. It's crazy. The saying goes that SpaceX is good at breaking things, but it is even better at fixing them, and I guess this is a way of fixing the tanks damaged during the first Starship flight. It's important to note that this tank in particular was being used just for water, so that might be the reason why these repairs are not being done in a particularly delicate way but rather in the fastest and most cost-efficient way. Over at the suborbital pads, Ship 25 continues to be prepared for its static fire testing campaign. We're all anxiously awaiting for the road closure and overpressure notices that will indicate that, at long last, we'll see this vehicle's engines being tested. As for when that will be, your guess is as good as mine, but hopefully soon. And finally, to wrap up this week, we saw on suborbital pad A, right next to where Ship 25 is located, teams pulling out the umbilical connectors and other piping. It's a mystery as to why this is being done, but most likely SpaceX is just readying the site for the next time it'll be used for testing. All right, that's it for this week. How long do you think it'll be until we see Ship 25 static fire tested? What about Booster 9? Let us know what you think in the comments. And of course, as always, be excellent to each other.